Hi, uh, name is Steve Baker, and I want to tell you about a project that I am uh, working on to bring insecticide-treated bed nets to, the, to my friends in the uh, Alta Ventuari. The Alta Ventuari is a part of the Ventuari River, which is located in Amazonas State in Venezuela. In that area, a tribe of indigenous people named the Aquana has lived for a thousand years, maybe more. There are in total perhaps 5,000, but in the Alto Ventuari, somewhere around 2,500. I first met these people while I was living in Venezuela. Uh, my wife and I moved there in 2001, and uh, we, we, we lived there until um, just about 2006. During that time, we had a lot of opportunity to travel in the Alto Ventuari, and we learned a lot about the Aquana. And we also learned a lot about their really amazing material culture and their mythological culture. But more importantly, we got to know the individuals, their children, their grandparents, the people. One of the things we learned was that these people have a really terrible problem with uh, malaria in particular. Malaria was one of the most destructive of their uh, individual health as well as their culture. And it was pretty clear that they were really struggling. You know, the Yaquana and their, their culture and their ability to live on the land in their territory was made very difficult by this disease which had been introduced by Westerners. Before the conquest there was no malaria in the jungle. Many of the leaders of the Aquana people who we met emphasized to Peggy and I that they needed help in fighting malaria specifically and also in general with their health situation. They're an isolated group and they share the problems of isolated groups. They have a hard time getting to the hospital. There's very little local medicine available and it's certainly not very sophisticated. In 2003, I met um, Dr. Oscar Noya and Dr. Noya heads the tropical medicine uh, department the of the right? University of Venezuela in Caracas. In the process of talking to him about malaria and what we might be able to do, I got the idea for various projects. This um, disease was not uh, an autochthonous disease from this continent, but was imported from, uh, from Africa with the slave trade, but also from Europe, because Europe in the past was, uh, uh, was uh, also an area with malaria transmission. Uh, especially the most affected area is in the Amazon region, which Venezuela belongs also with Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, and, and Colombia. This disease is transmitted uh, by the bite of the mosquito, especially at night, because this mosquito bites usually after 6 or 7 p.m. until 7 to 8 a.m. 
so we are uh, mainly exposed at night. That's a concept very important in relation with the prophylaxis of this disease. These uh, mosquitoes usually they live in ponds and especially in forest areas. So the Amazon region is one of the areas in which uh, the malaria is the main problem, the main health problem. And this area is uh, very rich in very different ethnic groups, very Am the, the Amerindians from, from this continent. And those groups are usually uh, very much affected by malaria. Many of these people, they live in isolated population. They don't have the proper health system. So the uh, possibility to get malaria uh, is very high, but also uh, they, they usually they don't have a good uh, health service. The surveillance is not appropriate in the, in the region, in the Amazon region. So usually they get severe malaria and they can die. And most of these cases are not diagnosed and also there is no any good registration of these deaths. So it's an underestimation of, a, of the real uh, figures of mortality and morbidity in the, all the Amazon regions. And among the uh, population is, are the kids, the children, are the most affected. They are the most susceptible to develop malaria and to develop severe malaria. And the other group which is very susceptible, pregnant women, especially if they get the malaria for the first time or the, is the first birth. Uh, uh, this, is the, this is another target. Not only because the risk of the life of the mother, but also the possibility of uh, that affected fetus, uh, they can, the, the fetus can die. So that's very important to, 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 to prevent malaria in these, especially these two groups, kids and uh, uh, pregnant women. We did various projects. We brought in new microscopes. We brought in used microscopes to help with the diagnosis of ma malaria. We sent a number of enfermeros who are the local nurses into Caracas to take a course in identifying malaria. And then we left, we left the, we left the country. We, we moved uh, away from Venezuela in 2006. So from afar, I had an opportunity to think about what it might be that I could do to be of more use in the fight against malaria. It was about that time that I read the um, World Health Organization Millennium Report on tuberculosis, AIDS, and malaria. And one of the things that jumped right off the page at me was the idea that prevention could be accomplished and it could be accomplished effectively and it could cut the rate of malaria better than any other intervention. In fact, it could cut the rate of malaria better even than some of the spraying programs from the past. The true medicine is to prevent diseases. That's the most, I think, the, 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 is the most valuable medicine. So in the case of malaria also, we should learn how to prevent the infection. So the best way to prevent uh, mosquito bites is to use bed nets, impregnated bed nets. I decided that I would try to bring as many insecticide treated bed nets of the sort that the WHO was supporting to my friends in the Alto Ventuari. I started looking on the net for the kind of bed net that would work with hammocks because all of the indigenous people of the Amazon use hammocks at night. The bed nets must fit a hammock in such a way that the insects do not get in. So I went looking for manufacturers of bed nets that were made for hammocks. I worked with some people from the village and some people from here to come up with a design that would work and be affordable. Is that I see from your website that you, you already make um, uh, rectangular mosquito nets. Mm -hmm. And what I need is a mosquito net that's going to be able to have hammocks strung right through it. Okay. We do have a Nika net, which is a hammock net for this type of hammock. Is it this type of hammock or is there a bar going across? 
Well, the, ki the kind of hammock, uh, I saw the picture of that, and I think you're talking about the banana type that, that goes like that. Correct. But the people I'm working with won't use that. Unless the item fits into the way they live, they're not going to use it. They'll just leave it aside, no matter, no matter how good we think it is for them. And, and what they're used to is a, is a bed net that comes across like this and then drops all the way to the floor. So a rectangular bed net with sleeves. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And we need to spread it and lift, lift it off them. Now, are they going to be inside or outside? They're going to be inside. inside. Hi, Steve. Hey, Peg, this just came in. OK. This is the, uh, I just got this from, from Hart. This is the first prototype that just right. came in from China. And I'd like to spread it out and just make sure that they got it the way I wanted to. All right. All Let's right. find so a. Here, here's a hole. Well, that, I think, is the sleeve. The sleeve for the hammock. For the hammock to go mm -hmm. through. And yeah. up there, there's one of them. One, one of one the tabs. One of the tabs. And here's another tab. OK, so if you hold on to that. OK, so there it is. There's another tab. OK, and there's fourth. So okay. you can see oh. how nice and big it is. Right. This is what Lissardo wanted. He wanted it large so you know he could get in there with his family and not touch the edges. Okay. So and this part and here this goes out. Yeah, like the sleeve. That. The sleeve goes on the hammock like that. Uh -huh. So the sleeve part will be like that, and then these parts will be and like spread this. Spread out. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, and it was Hart's idea to put tabs. Then came the question part. of insecticide treatment. And there are a lot of modalities. The original modality was to soak the mosquitero in a chemical, let it dry, and that treated it for six months. That regimen, though, requires repeated treatments every six months, every six months, every six months, which means that which requires people with no money to buy or get, in some way, the treatment chemical. And this is not so easy. So my solution was to go to a company called Insect Shield, which had developed a method for bonding the insecticide, the permethrin, directly to the material of, they developed it for clothing, so they do it for clothing for outdoors people, but the, the same process allows these mosquiteros to be impregnated with the very affected permethrin insecticide and repellent. And Insect Shield was willing to uh, do the first 200 the number that we purchased for this pilot project free of charge. And I, I took them up on that offer. Recently, we've been looking for markets, untraditional markets, where we could take the insect shield technology and perhaps do more than help somebody enjoy a weekend fishing trip. So in some places of the world, uh, insect protection is, is not just a matter of uh, enjoyment versus nuisance, but it could be a matter of life and death. And, uh, it's been very fulfilling for us to work uh, with the uh, Steve Baker and his team on the uh, uh, malaria prevention project for the Alto Ventori and uh, the native people there. Uh, we've provided the treatment of the initial bed nets and uh, we hope to continue to be involved with the product as it grows. And, uh, and flourishes. In Venezuela, we learned how satisfying and fulfilling direct action was when we were looking to do this project. And the question came up, well, should we form our own charitable group? Or, or how should we deliver this so that in future, any money that we collected to buy more mosquiteros could go all 100% to buying mosquiteros. So we decided to work with already known, already established NGOs who did the kind of work that we wanted to do. We have a charitable organization uh, in Venezuela that we work with also. And we work with the indigenous groups. Uh, we work with local indigenous groups in Alto Ventuari and their governmental agency. We also work with a state and national indigenous groups in Venezuela. Me parece que es muy importante. ¿Por qué es importante? Porque vemos también que la zona más apartada de nuestro estado es el Alto Orinoco, es la zona de Manapiare, 
la zona de Río Negro, que son una zona difícil de acceso para todas las poblaciones indígenas, para todas las instituciones, porque se necesita mucho tipo de apoyo, llámese apoyo aéreo, apoyo fluvial para esas penetraciones, y hay también días que uno tiene que caminar en esos caminos tan pequeños, y que hay que caminar a pie días para llegar a una comunidad indígena de lo más apartado. Entonces siempre decimos que también desde Orpia debemos de articular con otras instituciones para un beneficio, un beneficio para nuestra población indígena. People have asked me, how are you going to get all those mosquiteros from Caracas into this very isolated place in the jungle where there are no roads in, no buses, no planes, or nothing like that? And that's a good question, because access to the Alto Ventuari is a difficult situation. And we found in past trips that the best way to do this is to make alliances locally. We made a good alliance with the Ministry of Health in um, Amazonas State, and that will bring extra benefits to this expedition. The Ministry has, for instance, agreed to send a number of doctors on this expedition to uh, give inoculations to um, all of the people who live there for hepatitis, for yellow fever, and for childhood diseases for the kids. It's an area, the area of Kakuri is an area un poco de difícil acceso y permanencia, ¿no? Y se puede entrar por dos vías, vía aérea o vía por río. Eh, la vía por río es muy difícil ya que hay varios raudales o saltos que hay que pasar. Por lo tanto, esa vía es, es, es muy lenta y muy difícil. Entonces, lo más eh, fácil es a través de la vía aérea que ese servicio nos lo está prestando actualmente el ejército venezolano, la Fuerza Aérea Venezolana, trasladando eh, no solo al equipo de salud, sino al equipo médico que va a atender esa zona. ¿no? Es, es un poco complicado la organización del operativo, pero no es imposible. ¿no? Y, y coordinando bien las las actividades se puede lograr el cometido. No solamente se va a abordar con el proyecto lo que es la entrega de mosquiteros y microscopios, sino que también se van a hacer unas actividades de entrega de lentes para la población de ese sector, que es altamente necesario, ya que no contamos con oftalmólogos. Tenemos un solo oftalmólogo para atender 150 mil personas. Entonces,